All right, macro students, here we go with part two of our module 63 um, lecture on aggregate demand. All right, so we now know that the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. And so we know that if, or since the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping, we know that that tells us that if price level goes up, then quantity demanded of real GDP goes down. And that if price level goes down, then quantity demanded of real GDP goes up. Like we know that that, like we get that, but now we're gonna answer that question like why? Why is that true? And so, um, and the, uh, the same thing as saying the quantity demanded of real GDP um, goes up or down is also saying that C, I, G, and N, X change. Now, notice this just says CI and NX. That's because um, G, government spending, is a little bit different because government spending doesn't change because of price level changing, you know, inflation. Government spending is more likely to change because that's what Congress wants to do. So they're not really um, susceptible to changes in the price level like the other categories are. So let's ask ourselves now why. Why is it that price level goes up, quantity demanded of real GDP goes down? Why is it that when the price level goes up, people buy less stuff? All right, so we have two reasons here. And notice these reasons are not the law of demand. The law of demand was that for was in unit one. Um, and this is different. So the first reason is called the wealth effect. And that's when the price level goes up, purchasing power goes down. Now that term purchasing power, it means how much can you purchase or buy with your money? Now, when the price level of things goes up, you can't buy as much stuff with that same amount of money, right? Just like today, if I get $20, I can go to the movies by myself. And, but you know, 50 years ago, if somebody had $20, they, that, that was so much money that they could bring all of their friends to the movie. Um, so, you know, the purchasing power of money continues to go down. Well, when things become more expensive, we can't buy as much stuff with our money, right? So we get that. This is really basic. If the price level goes up, we can't buy as much stuff. So therefore, quantity demanded of real GDP goes down because if everything is more expensive, we just can't buy as much. We just can't do it. That's why that quantity demanded goes down. Now, the second um, reason is called the interest rate effect. And it is, a, it is more difficult to understand than the wealth effect, but it is just as important. So yes, we do need to understand it. So because we skipped unit three and at the end of quarter one, we just focused on the EverFi program, there's something from unit three we didn't learn that you need to know in order to understand this interest rate effect. So we're going to go through that right now. So um, get yourself, you know, um, another thing that you can write on or you can write on like the back of this packet of notes here. But we're going to do something here. Um, and we're going to title this the loanable funds market. Loanable funds market. Now remember, a market is anywhere where, th any place where things are bought and sold. And you know, and sometimes it's on actual place, you know, so the internet. And loanable funds are loans, you know loanable loans funds means money so this is the place where loans are bought and sold now that can sound weird to us the idea of like a loan being bought or sold but that's actually what's happening if i take out a loan to buy a house i am actually buying that loan now it's weird because usually when we buy something, we get something and we give them the money, right? Well, with lo the loan, we're getting, what we bought was a bunch of borrowed money and we're not gonna pay for it immediately. We're gonna pay for it very slowly over time. So 
when I borrow money, I'm buying this loan and then in return, I have to pay it back slowly over time, plus I have to buy them or I have to pay them interest, which is that extra money that you have to pay back in addition to the amount of the loan, right? When the only reason that banks give out loans is because they get back more money than they gave out in the first place, right? Because they're businesses and they're trying to make money, right? They don't just give out loans because we're all so cute, right? So anyway, um, so loans are bought and sold. And so if there's a loanable fund market, then we can draw a basic supply and demand curve. Now for the loanable funds market, the price of a loan is actually the interest rate. The price of the loan is the interest rate. Like how much is that loan gonna cost me? Is it gonna cost me a 4% interest rate? Is it gonna cost me a 10% interest rate? Is it gonna cost me an 18% interest rate? Like how much is a loan going to cost me? That is the interest rate. And as you can imagine, the lower the interest rate, the more people who are willing to go out and buy or get that loan. So that means that the demand for loanable funds looks like that. And here we have our quantity of loanable funds. So the lower the interest rate, the more people are willing to go out and get a loan. Just like the lower the price of the shoes, more people will be willing to go out and buy them. Just like the lower the price of the car, more people will be willing to go out and buy it. Same with loanable funds or loans. That interest rate goes down, more people will go get one. All right, so we also have the supply of loanable funds. Well, where do loans come from? Loans come from banks. So the supply of loanable funds comes from banks. And the demand for loanable funds, those are people and businesses, because businesses take out lots of loans, people and businesses who want loans. Okay, so now just like with anything else, the demand for loanable funds, the curve can change, and the supply for loanable funds can change. Now, let's talk about where loanable funds come from. Where do banks get their money from? They get it from me. They get it from you. They get it from anybody who puts their money into a bank, right? When we put our money into a bank, they don't just like put the money into a drawer and then take it back out for us when we ask for it back. No, they use that money. That's why they want it, right? Like the bank hanging on to my money is quite the service they're doing for me. They're hanging on to my money for me. They're keeping it safe. They're letting me withdraw it all the time with my little my little debit card, right? Um, you know, like that's quite the service. And again, they're not doing it because we're all so cute. They're doing it because when I let them hang on to my money, they in turn give that money to somebody else as a loan. And then that person has to pay back the loan plus interest. So they use our money to make more money, which is why we get to keep our money in the bank. So if people start to save more money in the bank, that means that the supply, well here, let's draw another, a new little thing here. Okay, so we have supply of loanable funds, demand of loanable funds, interest rate, and quantity of loanable funds. Okay, so if the scenario is that people save more money in the bank. Okay, if that's what's happening, people save more money in the bank for whatever reason, then what's gonna happen is the supply of loanable funds increases. Well, if the supply of loanable funds increases, look what happens to our equilibrium rate. The interest rate goes down, the quantity goes up because more people want loans. All right, so if more people save money in the bank, the result is that means therefore 
supply of loanable funds increases, therefore the interest rate decreases, therefore more people will get loans. More people will get loans. All right, well, let's say that there's a different scenario. Supply of loanable funds, demand for loanable funds. Let's say the scenario now is that um, more people save money in the bank. Oops, I just said that. Scribble it out. Some people who hate scribbles on their notes are now mad at me. I apologize. So now let's say that um, more people want loans for whatever reason, right? And it's not because of the price of the loan changed. It's that that would be a shift in demand. So if more people want or need loans, that means that the demand for loanable funds has increased. And if the demand for loanable funds increases, then we now have a higher interest rate. Because this is our interest rate. Here's our quantity of loanable funds. So more people want loans. That means demand for loanable funds goes up. And that means interest rate goes up. <clears throat> Sorry. And then we can also see that our quantity went up as well. So still more people get loans. Okay. So now that we know all this stuff, we can go back to our original notes, to our interest rate effect. This one says price level goes up, right? So that means inflation happens. And then that means that um, that causes people and firms to need more liquid money. Liquid money is the type of money that you can spend right away. Um, liquid money, it means like, oh, all of your wealth isn't, um, isn't held up in a, um, like a house or something. It's money, like money in the bank that you can actually spend. So if the price level goes up, this is saying that more people are going to need liquid money. So they will borrow more money. It also says sell bonds. Cross that out. I don't care about that part. Okay. We're not talking about bonds today. And then that means if more people need money, I wrote supply of loanable funds. That's a total mistake. It should say demand for loanable funds then goes up, which means that interest rates goes up. And if interest rates go up, that often means that businesses won't do as much investment spending. Like maybe people are taking out more loans, but maybe the businesses are not. And so therefore, the quantity demanded of real GDP goes down. Remember what we're talking about here. The interest rate effect is one of the reasons why the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. It's one of the reasons why if the price level goes up, the quantity demanded of real GDP will go down. Now, your book talks about this. However, everywhere else in the other videos that I've asked you to watch, they talk about the other scenario, which is the this scenario here, which is the idea of um, if the price level were to go down, people would be able to save more money, which means the supply of loanable funds goes up, then interest rates go down, then the quantity demanded of loanable funds goes up, which means that people take out more loans. Therefore, consumption goes up and investment goes up. So this one right here, it gives you the same answer as this one, right? The start is the same, price level goes up, quantity demanded of real GDP goes down, right? And then this one, price level goes down, quantity demanded of real GDP goes up, quantity demanded of real GDP. 
goes up. But we could tell the opposite story. If the price level goes down, or excuse me, if the price level goes up, people have to spend more of that money on the things they need, which would cause the supply of loanable funds to go down because people are spending more of their money instead of saving it in the bank. So that would be the opposite story from this one. You know what? Let's go through that. So if price level goes up, right? If inflation happens, therefore, supply of loanable funds goes down because people need to spend more of their money instead of saving it right? Maybe we should add that in there. If price level goes up, then people need to spend more of their money. Sorry, doorbell. I got a package. <laughs> people, now the dogs are going to bark. So then people need to spend more of their money. Hush, dogs! Then the supply of loanable funds goes down. Right? And then that looks, oh my gosh. Dogs, I'm, on, I'm making a video here, hush. And then supply of loanable funds goes down, interest rate goes up. So therefore, you know, the opposite of what we have. So, you know, therefore interest rates go up. Therefore, um, people take out less loans. Therefore, um, if they're not going to take out their loans, they're not going to spend that money, which means that the quantity demanded of real GDP goes down. All right, there's part two of our video. There will be a part three. Here we go.